Today, we're gonna to be taking a closer look at my latest build, this custom rover that actually drives. And we're gonna examine some of the techniques I used, what was my inspiration behind building it, and challenges I faced along the way. Let's get started. In the LEGO community, there are multiple theme months that occur throughout the year. February sees the occurrence of Feb Rovery, where you're encouraged to build a sci-fi rover and post it in the month. This year, I collaborated with some friends building rovers as well, and we decided on an unusual approach to determine what our rovers would look like. We each selected an inspiration image and we compiled those three images into a collage and that collage would serve as the mood board for all of us to design a new custom rover. The images we selected were a sci-fi suit of armor, especially the helmet, a modern interior, and these real-life power tools. In my case, I also wanted to try motorizing my rover as that's something I've long had the idea that it would be fun to try and make but never done before. And recently having acquired the app control Batmobile, I actually had the motors and hub to utilize here. I used the basic chassis from that set as my starting point, as for my first motorized vehicle, I wanted to keep things basic and make sure it actually works. So one motor drives two wheels on the left and the second motor drives the two wheels on the right. This removes the need for an actual steering setup, instead working like a bulldozer where you just drive one side at a time or both to go straight. I knew the motors and control hub would take a decent amount of space, so I made a pretty beefy chassis with six large wheels so that I had plenty of room to incorporate those components and conceal them in the finished model. So with the main frame in place, I could then move on to considering the aesthetics of the build. And of course, for that, I went back to the mood board that we created together. And I quickly settled on a color scheme of red, black, silver, and grays. The circular pattern motif from the interior and sci-fi armor were combined into this circular buildup, and that was actually one of the first things I made, and I just had it set aside and had to figure out where it could fit well on my rover, but I knew it was a detail I had to include. Then I started playing around with how to set up the cabin of the vehicle. It was wide enough that I wanted to be able to fit two minifigures inside, and I thought a trans red windscreen would look really sharp against the grays and blacks of the other colors but I had to play around with a few different configurations of which specific windscreen to use and the orientation for it. Eventually I settled on this setup, which I'm pretty happy with. For the back of the build, I had the idea that I could probably do some sort of large cargo unit or tank around the control hump to conceal that and incorporate it well with the transport vibes of the vehicle. At first I was using these large black elements, but wasn't really happy with the shape they were giving nor the colors. And on looking at the power tools, inspiration image specifically, I thought a large chunk of red could fit well in here, especially when having those flanking black arms on either side. It was coming along really well at this point, and I was quite happy with the overall design and was thinking, oh, we're almost done, but then had an unexpected challenge of where do I hide the cables that run from the motors to the control hub? Um, they were a bit longer than I needed in this setup, which meant there was excess cable to be hidden somewhere. So I ended up including a bit of a cavity under that control hub area so I could hide the cables in there. And then the details around the back were the last thing I had to figure out. So I ended up settling on this silver piping detail, which I think looks really cool and let me use these fun macaroni tubing elements in silver. And then after putting it on the back, I realized it would also work better for the front bumper instead of the black Technic connectors I had been using previously. And then on completing the model, of course, it was time for photography, and in this case, taking a video to show off the fact that it actually drives. I used my standard setup for that, where I drape a roller curtain over the back of my couch, and then I have two lights I use to give plenty of good lighting, and then just a camera on a tripod. Then I did a little bit of post, correction to the images, adjusting the brightness, contrast, color balance, just small tweaks in GIMP, and then I was ready to post. I'm really happy with how this build turned out. It was a lot of fun and a completely unique experience to have a custom LEGO vehicle that could actually drive around. I would love to try some more like this again in the future, and I hope you all enjoyed it. Also, be sure to check out the rovers that Marn and Aaron came up with, as they have some really unique interpretations of the same three reference images that I was working off of. I hope you enjoyed this, and maybe you're even encouraged to try your hand at your own custom sci-fi rover. They're super fun projects to take on.